Welcome to The World According to Mike Graham. Tonight, I'll be making one lucky person Prime Minister for the week and bringing you another terrific takedown from Donald Trump. But first up, let's take a deep dive into the rise and fall of Nicola Sturgeon. Nicola Sturgeon joined the Scottish National Party at the age of 16 and quickly rose through the ranks. Even as a child, she showed real talent. She saw Miss Muffin and the Crooked Man. They were bobbing with Mary and the Little Lamb. It was Fandabidozy, Fandabidozy, Fandabidozy and the dance all night. Hey! Nicola was ambitious and became the youngest candidate in the 1992 general election. The rising support has obviously been um, translated across the board in Scotland now, but it's been there amongst young people for some time. But there was no stopping Sturgeon, and in 2007, she became Deputy First Minister to Alex Salmond. Nicola Sturgeon, Scottish National Party, 9,000. <laughs> but when Scotland voted against independence in 2014, Salmond resigned and Sturgeon became Queen. And the only challenge to Nicola Sturgeon taking over was how many adoring fans she could fit in a hall. Nicola soon became hungry for power and was convinced that everyone in Scotland wanted independence. A warhead detonated under Dumfries will break Scotland clean away, sending us out into the North Sea where we will bounce off Norway and come to rest next to Denmark, leaving us irrevocably part of Europe for the rest of time. Sadly, though, Nicola was completely wrong. No telephone. <laughs> Many other no's followed. Nicola hit the headlines again this year when she put a trans rapist in a women's prison. Here she is explaining exactly why this was a good idea. There is circumstances in which a trans woman uh, will be housed in the male prison estate. Is there any the context in which thing? a woman born as a woman will be housed in the male estate? Look, we're talking here about trans women. And I'm now asking about women born as women. Uh, I don't think there are circumstances there, uh, but... So it's different for trans women? Well, yes. And then in February, Nicola surprised us all and resigned as First Minister of Scotland. Nobody knows why, including her. I know it might seem sudden, but I have been wrestling with it, albeit with oscillating levels of intensity for some weeks. But there's more. In April, Nicola's husband was arrested. Peter Murrell is no longer in this house. He is facing a barrage of questions from detectives as this investigation gathers pace. Then in June, just when you thought you'd seen everything, Nicola was arrested as well. The last few days have been obviously difficult, quite traumatic. It turns out the SNP were having a few financial issues, something to do with a camper van and her mother-in-law. A £100,000 luxury motorhome was reportedly wheeled away from the house in Fife as part of the active investigation into SNP finances. Nicola may be gone, but it's good to know Scotland is in safe hands with the new SNP leader, Humza Useless. <laughs> That's my deep dive into the rise and fall of Nicola Sturgeon. Now, let's meet an expert and find out where it all went wrong. <laughs> Did something happen to her, do you think, in the last sort of year that she was in charge? Well, I think it happens to a lot of politicians. The, the fame and notoriety went to her head. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I was... I, read, I regard myself like you as a reasonable pal of Nicholas, especially when she was in opposition yeah. and she was Alex's deputy. But I remember buying her... It's funny how champagne comes into all these things. I remember buying her and Peter, her husband, yeah. a bottle of champagne when they got engaged right. after the party conference in, I think it was Perth. Mm. And she was a very good politician, make yeah. no mistake about it. She's from the... It's pretty hard school, Glasgow University yeah. Debating Society. Produced a hell of a lot of great debaters. Charlie, Charlie Kennedy springs to mind. Ben Campbell, not so much, but yeah, he was a good, good debater, and she, yes. she was excellent. Right, lawyer trained, not a very successful lawyer, but a very good debater and a very good uh, politician. She learned carefully. Alec mm. was a mentor; he taught her carefully, and she was a smashing. She, I can remember her against, say, for instance. Some of the Scottish First Ministers, like the Labour ones, like Henry McLeach or yeah. Jack McConnell, she tied them in knots right. week after week. Yeah. She was very, very good. But what happened, the fame goes to their head. Nicola decided she didn't want to just be a Scottish politician. She wanted to be on the international stage. Yeah. That's when she started saying, I'm going to change the world. Yeah. That's when you got the gender recognition stuff. Right. I'm going to take Scotland out of Britain. And the whole thing became, quite frankly, farcical. She was going to conferences in Italy at which the uh, uh, 
Hillary Clinton was the guest speaker. Right. And to Nicola, she wasn't Hillary Clinton. She was just Hillary, my pal. Yes. It was getting ridiculous. Yeah, well, that was it. And there was this kind of female thing going on, wasn't there? Um, because yeah. it was the same with, with the, the outgoing then um, um, Prime Minister of, of New Zealand, you know. Uh, it was this, you know, women can fix the world. Men have been in charge for too long. It's all a mess. So we're going to come and sort it all out. And I mean, I think in the end for her, it's a tragic sort of story, isn't it? Because whatever she's now remembered for doing, it will be for not getting independence for Scotland or not making it happen. And for having to sort of leave the biggest job in her career sort of under a cloud, even if nothing worse happens to her. Yeah, I mean, and what she chose to forget or ignore was the fact that the women she was aligning, aligning herself with were, were leaders of their respective countries in total. Yeah. She would never respect or accept the fact that she was a part of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom to her was passe. That was finished. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to take Scotland out yeah. of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom will no longer exist. And, of course, she got that massively wrong. And it will always be, in my view, um, the, the part of the United Kingdom, because you can't see the SNP ever winning a referendum, can you? No, she, and she, she, she never... She just failed in the main, the main thing she should have done. She failed to take the people with her. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the election results, they were very good. <coughs> Excuse me. She never lost an election. But if you look at the numbers, the numbers she acquired were never, ever the majority of the voters in Scotland. Yeah. Right. They were the biggest section of the voting public. But they, well, they were all, all like the last one. I'm trying to think. I did it the other, I wrote about it the other day. I think, <coughs> excuse me, 2019, she got 40% of the vote right. in Scotland. Got a hell of a lot of seats for that. But 60% of the voters voted for Labour, the Tories, yeah. or the Lib Dems. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the way the voting system works in this country, that didn't count. But there were, the, the majority of Scots have never been in favour. Of independence. Yeah. yeah, well, it's good to know that. It's good to hear somebody like you saying it. Alan, good to see you. Thanks very much indeed. We'll have to catch up uh, in more salubrious <coughs> surroundings later on uh, at some and point. And still get around. As soon as, as soon as they stop striking on the trains. Alan Cochran there from The Telegraph giving his lowdown uh, on Nicola Sturgeon, the former First Minister of Scotland, of course. And that uh, was my deep dive into Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> Donald Trump's been back in court this week and he has been hilarious. Here's this week's Trump's takedown. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Does anybody think he's going to make it to the starting gate? I mean, the guy can't find his way off of a stage. Look, here's a stage. Here's a stage. I've never seen this stupid stage before, right? I've never seen it. But if I walk left, there's a stair. And if I walk right, there's a stair. And this guy gets up. Where am I? Where the hell am I? You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. And now, why is this still a thing? <laughs> Why is HS2 still a thing? Is it a thing? Rishi Sunak explained it very well, I thought, when he said he was going to set up something called Network North. Uh, he basically said that the trains will run to Manchester, but they won't be very fast. So we're going to have a slow train network going in the north of England with about £36 billion being spent. In the south, uh, the HS2 project will still be called HS2, but it won't be running very fast. So it'll be a, quite a slow high-speed train, um, and it will run on the old track. So I don't really know what's going on with HS2. All I know is just get rid of it. Just get rid of it all. Just, we don't need it. Get rid of it, Rishi. <laughs> That's the end of part one. But don't worry, we've still got time to do Prime Minister for a week and Biden's balls up. Welcome back to part two of The World According to Mike Graham. And now it's time for Prime Minister for the Week. And now it's time to meet the contestants for this week's Prime Minister of Four a Week. And it's Howard Cox, uh, the man from Fair Fuel UK, and, of course, currently running uh, to be Mayor of London to replace uh, Sadiq Khan. 
Uh, no, yeah. we won't say anything about that. Bushra Sheikh is here as well, former Apprentice star, now political commentator. Welcome to both of you. So, you. basically, we've had this week's Rishi Sunak uh, speech of the week, uh, which wasn't particularly overwhelmingly good, I didn't think. Um, so, you haven't got much competition, really. I mean, we, we've, we decided <laughs> to run this show uh, like this because of Liz Truss, because she was only Prime Minister for a couple of weeks. Um, so you guys could probably do a better job. This is a great platform for you, actually, Howard. I know. There'll probably be some reason why we won't be allowed to put it out, but, you know, <laughs> who can say? Um, Bushra, why don't you kick us off? What was your first thing that you would do? Oh, well, you know what? I, I, I hate the idea that we just have lots of young people walking around with weapons, with mm. knives. We've seen what's happened in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I would imprison every single person yeah. that is caught with a weapon. Yes. End of story. Right. You do not get a chance, if you are caught with that, and to add to the fact that I, I feel like we should go back to uh, stop and search. Yeah. If you are, if you, if a police officer um, finds you sus uh, suspicious, yeah. search them, stop them, yeah. and if they find a weapon, because jail, surely you're absolutely go. right. Because surely, if people, if kids, particularly younger kids, like as young as twelve and thirteen, even now carry knives and certainly in London, you know, if they knew that if they got stopped and the police officer found a knife on them, that they were going to go straight to jail. Surely that would stop it, wouldn't it, Howard? Absolutely right. And Bush, I'll tell you what, would you like to be my deputy mayor? Oh, absolutely. I mean, th this I'm is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. I couldn't disagree. I mean, we with call anything. it lawless Britain um, quite a lot on, on, on my show, The Independent yeah. Republic, because it feels a bit lawless out there, doesn't it? It feels it does. as though you don't know what you're going to witness on any given day on the streets. And it's, it's, it's almost like the kids out there feel like that they can just get away yeah. with stuff, and we need to have these deterrence and consequences yeah. in place. Yeah. Although this brings us rather nicely to your first nomination. Well, it? that's it. I mean, um, you know, it's very much... For the Why does it say Dave here, by the way? It says Dave. Never mind. Don't, yeah, don't worry I'm, about I'm it. I'm known as Dave. Yeah, I'm Dave. I'll just call you Dave. Dave. Hello, Dave. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Howard. That's all right, Jim. Howard, yeah. yeah. You carry on. So you want to put every available Bobby on the beat? Well, I mean, there's a ridiculous uh, statistic, and this is very worrying. In London, for example, at any one time, the bobbies available, mm. only 5% are out on the street. Really? That means 95% are stuck behind a desk yeah. somewhere, probably chasing people on Twitter. Right. And all the well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because when they say we haven't got enough uh, officers to do anything... They have got enough. They have them when they need them. Yeah. You know, they can certainly send plenty of officers to a football match for which they get extra money. They can certainly send plenty of officers to stand outside London Bridge Station when there's a billboard game on because uh, yeah. they know the crowds yeah. are coming back that way. You know, when they've got demos to go and uh, uh, sort of police... What, stop oil mm. demos? They just stop oil. I mean, there's hordes of these guys. Well, this is the point I'm saying. I mean, as part of my manifesto, and we're writing it at the moment, but one of the hearts of it is actually we're going to triple the number of bobbies on the beat. We need visible policing. We need people to understand the community everywhere around mm. Greater London and right across the country. Yeah. And my, I would actually tell every chief uh, constable, every single police and crime commissioner across, get all your bobbies mm. away, out of computers. You've got the, an iPad technology. You've got the old technology. system of the, phone, the police exactly. box where the police could actually go and make a phone call from. I mean, they could do a modern version of that, couldn't they? Well, they In well, a shopping centre. Well, you know, the, uh, one of the things I'm calling for police access points. Yes. At 24-hour centres mainly mm. in supermarkets. You used like to call that. them police stations. Exactly. They shuttle them down. I, I know they do. <laughs> and you'd have it in uh, McDonald's and people saying, how are you going to pay for that? I said, the businesses would love to it. To be fair, the, the police spend a lot of time at McDonald's. You might as well give them a station <laughs> to just sit at. You <laughs> know, they, yeah. They'd be happy there. Well, look, supply of a cheeseburger. You know. love yeah. it. Yeah. What's your next one? Oh, this is going to be interesting. So for me... I like I, this. I would, I would totally ban council Fantastic. Brilliant. Ban it. Ban yeah. council tax. There is tax upon tax upon tax yeah. in this country, and a lot of people don't understand that. That right. we pay tax. You know, we we uh, we pay stamp duty. Right. Um, then we pay money again when we sell the house again. Then we've got council tax. Then we've got road tax, and then we've got so many taxes. And I just feel like I want to give people back some money. Yes. Enjoy your life. Yeah, Let's right. bring You're back. You're wonderful. Balance. I love you. This is brilliant stuff. Yeah. Honestly. Well, except you'd never be able to become mayor, would you? Because there'd be no money to pay you unless well, you did it for free. I could stand as mayor and get rid of mayors. Uh, we well, could. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. Because the problem with council tax, right, is what a lot of people don't know, and you've obviously worked this one out, is about 80% of it goes towards the salaries and the pensions of the people who work for the council. True. It doesn't go to the services that you get. And no. the services that you get now are not really worth the paper they're written well, on. It's true of the civil service, mm. isn't it? They've, yeah. they've got these gold-plated pensions and mm. their schemes and they're protected. Yeah. You can't get rid of them, right. all that sort of thing. And we've got these wonderful jobs and we've got these... What are these called? Jobs we got? Divisive, you know, D, whatever it is. These uh, Jobs for the boys. Exactly. Yeah. Well, those, you know, LGBT <laughs> jobs. Oh, that, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, diversity, yeah. Yeah, that's well, the word. Well, how, would you, how would you pay for stuff that council tax does pay for, though, like the money that goes to schools and the police and... And, uh, and, and potholes. You know, potholes, maybe. Yeah. But also um, the bins and all yeah. that. What would you do? Well, look, firstly, I just want to say that we just had an entire council go bankrupt again. Yeah. Birmingham, Birmingham City, right. it, it, it's gone bankrupt. So, you know, where is this council tax really going? Yes, if you're going to pull away one tax, you're going to have to... Uh, 
um, get it from somewhere else. But yeah. I genuinely believe that we're, we're, we're actually wasting money in so yeah. many different departments that I could very, very easily find the money that we do not get from ta council tax from other mm. funds. Yeah, um, you want to ban something else, don't you, Howard? Well, it's no surprise, is it? I mean, it's not. No. I mean, we've had the ULES extension with two out of three people in the public conference. How's that going for Sadiq? Well, <laughs> well, there's a lot of cameras actually disappearing. Funny enough. Funny enough, yeah. exactly. And uh, unfortunately, I know some of those people. Oh, yeah. The police will probably be after me. They'll now. probably be knocking down careful. the house in a minute. Yeah, be yeah, careful, yeah, Howard. Go, I have to be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we know ULES is a completely and utterly... Un well, it's an unfounded tax, mm. and it's purely and utterly not necessary extending it, even his own TfL and even wonderful Imperial College have mm. told him it won't make any difference to the area yeah. brief. Of course it won't. But I, I will go further and get rid of all you All of it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to somebody from London Assembly this week who said, you know, you can tell that this is unwanted because when they did the first ULES, it wasn't, there was no uproar about it. People just accepted it. The mm -hmm. second one even, nobody complained. This one, everybody's complaining. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and the idea that they're saying oh, it's only a small percentage of cars, about a million cars are affected, right? It is about yeah. a million cars. But I would go further. I'll get rid of LTNs, 20 mile an hour limit. Yeah. Speed bumps, pinch points. Well, Rishi Sunak's going to do all that, isn't he? I know, so I understand. So he says. I, I heard him this Except week. when he was asked how he was going to do it, he didn't really seem to have a clue because isn't apparently it, he hasn't got the power. Isn't it funny how he's some popular thing like this? It's an election next year. Yeah. Isn't it? Funny how he's apparently come up so. with this. Bushra, this next one is going to be very interesting because I can't imagine why you want to do this, but it's another ban, ladies and gentlemen. It's a ban. I just want to ban sperm donor banks. And this came. Off <laughs> I mean, I, seriously. I'm looking forward to your explanation. Why? <laughs> but, OK, because first there was a story in the paper uh, a few days ago about a, man, a Dutch man who's fathered up to 550 kids. Blimey. Right? Now, that's obviously... He's probably given thousands. a lot thousands. of visits, isn't it? A it's and a lot, lot of money. Visits. But you, obviously he's frightened now because when he gave his sperm in, you could be anonymous. Right. But now there's a new bill being passed. I believe it was on Sunday or right. the Sunday is coming up. Is he here or is he in Holland? No, he's in, he's in Holland. It sounds like he's all over the place, to be honest. <laughs> well, he, he's all over the place, isn't he? But I mean, really, all think that child about maintenance this. Is yeah. look all up of to. that child maintenance oh, before you could be anonymous. But surely if you do it and, and it's meant to be anonymous and it changes later, you're protected by the nope. original anonymity, aren't you? No, is it, because it's backdated. It, no, it's, it's backdated because Correct. the child then gets its rights oh, to dear. find out who its biological well, parents are. Well, then presumably... Are. Yeah, you won't have to ban it because it will just stop because nobody yeah. will, will donate if they think they're going to get caught in some kind of you know potentially. Expensive but I, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this slightly further now, mm. and I'm going to say my concern always has been that when you don't know who your biological father is, talking about genetics and genes, you, there might be incest developing somewhere. You're going right. to end up dating your half brother and sister oh, at some God. point potentially. That, yeah. That's the God, frightening. The thought. That's a very good point. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I suppose for people who can't have children. Um, that would mean they just couldn't have children. I mean, I've always mm. made the argument that there's plenty of kids that need adopting. There you know, you go. so there's no well, reason I adopted why. my daughter. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you, See? you know, and, and lots of uh, very decent people want to adopt and yeah. aren't allowed to adopt yes. because Correct. the rules are so ridiculous. Mm. And for those people, this is their last kind of refuge, isn't it? It is absolutely. And there's so many kids, like you say, Mike, that need adopting. And I, I yeah. would just prefer people to go down that avenue than then just have children who don't know who their biological parents are. And then and all do you think this guy's problems. been doing it for the money? I don't even know of how much course. he gets. Oh, you get five hundred. Well, you'd like to think he's only doing it for the money. I mean, maybe he just enjoys going. I mean, I don't know. A quid a shot? I mean, I don't know. He just likes what they give him to, you know, to do the thing. I don't know. I mean, I can't get too filthy about it this time of night. But, yes. um, I mean, the other there was, was a story. I was in Scotland when I was working, and they had a sperm bank in Dundee, mm. and they had to shut it down because they only had one donor. And this guy was just turning up like every, every Thursday. Day. And they're going, well, we can't keep using you because everyone oh, will know it. who you are. Love There's it. one just around the corner from here. That's yeah. so interesting. I don't know. I just think these little things start somewhere and then when you look at society, you're like, how do we make it better? One step leads to another and just ban, sper ban the sperm banks. Yes. Well, I mean, that's controversial. Uh, what have you got to, to come back at with that one, Howard? Well, because, you know, you, you, I've got to say that she may have taken a bit of a lead here. I know. I'm a bit concerned about just this. because it's so I, unusual. I, I'm very impressed. Very yeah. impressed with it. <laughs> No, what, what is worrying me at the moment in time and what we're, we're listening to, what's happened this week at the Conservative Party conference, and uh, I'm very worried by the fact that policy has been dictated by emotion mm. and not full facts, etc. Yeah. So I believe that, you know, my first day as Prime Minister, I would set up a department for, yeah, we call it common sense, but fundamentally the truth. Yeah. We need to have policy well, based on full truth. facts. Mm. A ministry of truth. Have then. you read 90 Days? I have, of course I have. Yeah. But we do need something like that because look at, for example, the person I'm fighting for the mayoral position uses regular emotive comments. Yeah. And one of, of course, 4,000 people are dying yeah. each year, which yeah. is a pathological lie. Yeah. I know Aren't he's you, not here to defend if you it. Start but... trying to, if you start trying to have a crusade to get politicians to start telling the truth, I mean, you're going to be out there for a long time. <laughs> you, know, you need a huge department. You have to hire about 75,000 people to police it all, you know. No, but you take my point. I mean, we need yes. to have the data checked. I'm afraid policy, and it happens in all national and local policy, 
politics, people are, are being influenced by the eco-zealots and their emotion, yeah. not on the true fact. Well, also, happening. these are the people as well who continually tell you that they're following some kind of science or other, as if that's some kind of magic pill. Yeah. That as long as you say, I'm following the science, you must be right then. But, yeah. And actually, absolutely rubbish, because you could see, I think there was a report this week about um, you know carbon offsetting, which yes. has always been a massive con, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you think it's all right to fly Nelton John's private jet plant, down plant to the south tree. of France, as long as you plant 25 trees Crazy. in Sri Lanka. No, it's not going to make any difference. No. The world is still going to burn if you believe it's going to burn, whether you like it or not. Yeah, totally. And, but, uh, you know, I think we're at this point where people are confusing truthful, hard facts with also intolerance. Yeah. They think when you're giving them values or a moral or something that's going to be yeah. good for the collective of everybody, yeah. somehow it, you are intolerant. And this is something that I'm finding. So common sense definitely is not common anymore. Yeah. I mean, the world headquarters of common sense, of course, is Talk TV. Absolutely. Knows Independent, um, Republic, uh, the yeah. Independent Republic. The Independent Republic, Mike Graham, in particular, every weekday, Monday, Friday, you know. But the common well, sense... <laughs> but, the common, well, actually, no. but this department Same. of the common sense will also make you a lord and a knight. Yeah, well, it, well, I don't want to be a lord or a knight, you know. I might yeah, just, but I'd have to make you one. Uh, well, you, well, you might, yeah. You might have to, but I might have to decline, <laughs> a bit like John Lennon. Anyway, listen, great. <laughs> really, really interesting. Well, I, I think the sperm donors wins it for me, not because I necessarily agree with you. I just think it's a really good idea um, to have to discuss out there because one of the problems that we've got now is you don't discuss things enough I don't think and that you know mm. the ramifications of, of what you've just said are really quite huge so I'm sorry Howard I'm gonna have to give it to Bushra oh, but I'm at the losing. end of the day she's gonna be Prime Minister for a week you yes. can be mayor for four years if you carry on with that sort of common sense <laughs> you know I mean I'm not able to make that happen unfortunately but, and make my deputy uh, but thank you very much both of you Thank um, you, Mike. When will, will we see you again on some televisual aspect apart from Talk TV? Oh, potentially. I mean, I do lots of commentating at, sort of across the board. And oh, good. It's fun. It's fun. Well, we it's must fun see to you debate. Again. It's fun to debate. Howard Cox, Bushra Sheikh, uh, Prime Minister for a week. She's won it. Yeah. Um, that was Prime Minister for a week. Uh, we'll be back after this. <laughs> I don't know what to say about Joe Biden this week. He has said some of the most ridiculous things anybody's ever heard. This dog just keeps biting people. Uh, here's Biden's balls up. I wanted to... Well, maybe he is speaking today. I had a note he wasn't speaking. At any rate, I'm, I'm going to stop there. Well, that was the world according to Mike Graham. Another week has been notched up. We'll see you next time. I'm Mike Graham and this is Plank of the Week. Join me every Friday night at 7pm right here on Talk TV for a run through the biggest planks of every single week. You can't miss it. How are you going to stop the votes? This is an international problem. How's that going for your party? I'm a millennial. You're a Victorian, I think. <laughs> this helps weather people. I'm going to help the vet office. <laughs> This, my friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe.